At least, not until this trial began. But, are you suggesting, Lord Van Zeeks, that this stain of blood was... Fabricated, my lord. Yes. And whilst the courts has been in session... What? I actually believe this. I must say I didn't expect such a crude reasoning from a prosecutor of your standing, Lord Van Zeeks. But I'm Magnus McGilded, a fellow known all over the capital for his fine contributions to public life. I don't take kindly to slander, and I'll fight for it to the bitter end. Even if it's rolling off the tongue of this Reaper of the, of the Bailey. Mr. McGildred. I realize this is your first appearance in court as the accused. However, I'm well aware of your involvement behind the scenes in great many affairs of dubious nature. You're very adept when it comes to avoiding getting your own hands dirty. And each time it happens that the case you're involved in is investigated, you adapt the facts. Adapt the facts. What does that even mean? When you wield the fortune the size of Mr. McGildred's, however ill-gotten it may be, nothing is impossible. Tampering with evidence, manipulating the scene of the crime, bribing witnesses. I toast your ability to, cons to concoct the most convenient of stories, sir. Tut, tut, Lord Van Zeeks. This will not do, so be sure. Will it now, counsel? <coughs> um, oh no. I think it's fair to say this does all sound like a rather far-fetched excuse by a desperate man. The blood on the skylight didn't exist, you say. But, if you also will cast your minds back, is it not true that the omnibus there has been in the courtroom the entire time? How could anyone possibly put a smear of blood in it without a word, world and his wife seeing? Isn't that right now, counsel? It's true. The omnibus has been in full view the entire time the court has been in session. My learned friend. Here's to hearing your opinion on the matter, in your own words. As you wish. Could someone have tampered with the omnibus during the trial? If you're asking me, I think... It's definitely possible. Someone fucking did. As a defense lawyer, it's my job to advocate for the defendant as best I can. But still, I feel as though something even more important is at stake here. There is no evidence to suggest that the defendant did as my learned friend suggests. However, in terms of having the opportunity to carry out the alleged tampering, there is one possibility. Oh, good gracious. Explain yourself, counsel. Yes, there is. It seems my learned Nipponese friend has no intention of running from the deceit. Deceit? I'm sure everyone still remembers clearly the recess that we were, we were forced to take. As a result of the smoke grenade fired off by the witness currently in the stand, Miss Gina Lestrade. What is going on? Be careful, Narahoto. Cover your face. Bailiff, don't let the accused escape. Secure the omnibus. I hereby call an emergency recess. Bailiff, ensure the defendant's in custody and clear the courtroom. The courtroom was filled with smoke and everyone was thrown into confusion. All of us were made to leave this chamber. In that brief interval, under the veil of smoke and all the chaos, it could have been possible to steal inside the omnibus. Are you wise? What are you trying to pull ye? You rotten feckless googer. Feckless? Googer? You're supposed to be defending me. There's a wicked plot. The plot to undermine me, so it is. Objection! Whatever you think it is, it changes nothing. The facts are the same. After this courtroom was evacuated earlier, as a result of the smoke grenade, a number of inconsistencies materialized in relation to the omnibus. Inconsistencies such as... To start with, the storage compartment underneath the rear passenger seat. Empty. When the police investigated the omnibus, this compartment was full of the driver's items. 
Secondly, we have the smear of blood on the edge of the skylight. As I have said, that was not present at the start of the trial this morning. Hmm. Unfortunately, Lord Van Zeeks, no one is able to corroborate your claims. That's true. When the omnibus was first wheeled out, both the storage compartment and the skylight were shut. Accordingly, I'm afraid to say, we cannot establish with any certainty if this evidence is a result of tampering or not. Indeed, my lord. No doubt there was not a single person who saw fit to verify such things. What do you think? Sorry? How about the omnibus? Is there anything else unusual about the omnibus? My lord. Yes, counsel. There is one further inconsistency. A mark that surely could not have been present at the start of the trial. What? What in the devil's name are you going to say now? If you dare betray me, little maggot, you better start watching your back. Objection! Silence, McGiddle. The court awaits the defense's clarification. Occur. This trial keeps swinging one way and then the other. I have no idea what's the truth and what's deception. What am I supposed to believe here? I shall have to ask you to elaborate, counsel. I feel like I would have seen the blood stain on the ground, but even then... Consider that the victim fell through the skylight onto the floor of the cabin, you would certainly expect to find signs of blood where he landed. But as far as I recall, this blood stain on the cabin floor was not there when the omnibus was first brought into the courtroom. Good lord. I felt like I looked down at one point, too. I said, I do believe you're correct, counsel. Well said. Although, as advocate for the defense, one might say that was a very careless slip of the tongue. I believe that the blood stain on the floor is a decisive piece of evidence. But if the question is whether the evidence is genuine or whether it was unlawful fabricated by s someone, I feel compelled to admit that there's at least a possibility that the evidence is fake. This trial is over. Mr. McGildred, I've done everything I possibly can to cooperate with the court, but tis all over now. But you're the defendant. Tis over, I tell you. Memory, recollection, what people think they saw, tis all a nonsense. Facts are what counts, and the fact is the bloodstain is there now. Ah, well. And over the course of this desperate trial, Long and extremely drawn out has it been that the good-for-nothing Reaper of the Bailey has failed to present any decisive evidence at all. I'm scandalized, so I am. I thought I'd better off Lord Van Zeeks. Well, my lord. I must concur with the defendant. The unaffirmed recollections of the individual cannot stand as evidence. At this moment in time, the particular bloodstain in question is very much in existence. In the absence of any credible method by which to prove its alleged previous non-existence. I regret to say it would be improper for this trial to continue. Your lordship can't be serious. Lord Van Zeeks, what is your position? Prosecution, my lord. Has no further witnesses or evidence to present. Very well. In that case, as I believe we have explored every possible avenue in the matter, I shall proceed my education. 
As a formality, I am, of course, obliged to confirm with the defense first. What formality? As things stand at the moment, it would seem that Mr. McGilder will be found not guilty. Yes. Which would mean we've won. Is that really the right outcome here? Is it really alright for the trial to come to an end now with all these unexplained inconsistencies? Counsel for the defense, your closing statement, please. Yes, my lord. The defense believes. This fucking button. This button is driving me nuts. Where is the button? It's the key to all this. stifling. I don't think it's him. But I'm the man defense lawyer. There's only one thing I can say in this situation. I believe the defendant, Magnus McGildred, to be innocent of the allegations brought against him. Thank you, counsel. Here's to you, my Nipponese friend, and the most object clothing I you have to hear in the court of law. Order, order. <laughs> Wahaha. Oh, it was a grand decision to appoint you my lawyer, so it was. A grand decision. You've saved one of London's most influential gentlemen, fella. You should be proud of yourself. Here, have this for your troubles. Ah, your job here is done, fella, and some fine work you've done, so you have. What do you mean? It's just that the right honorable gentleman has secondly put it before. The trial can't go any on anymore. And your closing statement there was, how did he put it now? Nothing more than a formality. make of all this. Was the evidence we seen genuine, or was it fake? Her lordship would be fuming, and he suddenly rubbish should be disposed of promptly, as I said. <laughs> the stinking rich are always guilty of something, you mark my words. I feel terribly ashamed that I ever doubted the lovely man who gave us the lovely park. Now the proceedings have unfolded in this way. I am compelled to declare a premature end to this trial. Furthermore, the court must accept the defendant's plea. I 
I thank you kindly, my lord. I hereby turn out the verdict of this court. But we still haven't determined if the blood stain in the omnibus is genuine or not. We don't know if these witnesses are telling the truth or the pack of lies. We have no idea about the truth. Lord Van Zeeks. My lord. The case made by the prosecution was flawed, plain, and simple. If indeed the omnibus presented as evidence was tampered with, the prosecution is at fault for allowing such a disgraceful perversion of justice to take place. Interesting. My sincerest apologies, my lord. Objection. But wait. When we were evacuated from the courtroom, Lord Van Zeeks ordered the evidence to be secured. I'm afraid the prosecution cannot shun responsibility in this matter. That's uh, so unfair. The capability of the defendant has not, at the present time, been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to proffer judgment. What? Well, Lord Van Zeeks, it's been a pleasure, so it has. And as for you, my dear fella, I couldn't have asked for a better defense. You mean to tell me this has all been a grand waste of time? Tis the law of the land, my good man. If you'd like to pursue this matter further, you can always go ahead and try to change the law. Magnus McGilded. Good grief, yeah, you have more to say to me, have you? Just one thing, a warning. This is far from over. Well, something to be look forward to then. I hereby pronounce the defendant, Mr. Magnus McGildred. I can't believe it. This is an outrage. I should have examined the evidence more. What are you talking about? The man's been cleared. He's innocent. In the courtroom the pandemonium for the second time that day, the judge delivered his verdict, and my first ever trial in Great Britain came to an abrupt end. With the defendant being found not guilty, obstinately a victory for us. But was it a good victory? Eighteenth February, by fourteen PM. The old Billy defendants and chamber. That certainly was a long trial. Ah uh, yes, it was. Your first ever trial on foreign soil and your first victory. It was wonderful performance. My heartfelt congratulations, and to you, Mr. Sato. Thank you for your assistance. I suppose we should be happy. The trouble is, we're still completely in the dark about what actually happened. Well, we didn't have enough time, but isn't it wrong? I mean, who was actually responsible for Mr. Mason's death? We didn't even know that. The sole aim of the defense is to obtain a verdict. Exonerates the, the defendant. You carried out your duty to perfection. Aye, that you did. Mr. McGildred. Ah, and the girl is with him too. Well, it seems that stories are true. Oh, what stories? About the six enormous fireworks that do be letting up when there's a verdict of not guilty. I'm pretty sure you must have seen them by now. Spectacular, wouldn't you say? Yes, definitely. I heard it was a sight to behold, and to be sure, it was. And now I got you to thank, I suppose, for having the opportunity to see it. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I'm not sure I really did anything. What on earth are you saying, fella? How did I walk out of here a free man, then? I don't think it was so much thanks to me as down to your planning. You're a straight-talking fella, aren't you? I must say, you had me astray in the head there once or twice. But you're young and headstrong, wahaha. <laughs> as water on the bridge. Congratulations, Mr. McGilded, on having your name cleared. But nothing's resolved. 
There's only one thing that matters to me. Oh. Hi. They've all seen that I didn't do that odious and absent indeed. It is grand, is it not? I suppose it is. Now the fine fellows of Scotland Yard can make matters in hand and sort out any weed details. They'll see it for what it is. They'll get to the truth. I've absolute faith in them, so I have, after all. I do be providing a good number of their wages with all the taxes I pay. It's not that funny. So then, as we agreed aforehand, 1,000 guineas for your troubles, fella. Oh, no, 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 I couldn't possibly accept that much. Ah, be wise, you're a humble people, are ye, from the east. Well, if you insist, but have this, still in all, you deserve a reward. Mr. Magnus of McGildred. Everything is ready, sir. If you'd like to follow me to the courtroom. To the courtroom? What's this, officer? The sooner than I was led to believe. I hope not inconvenient, sir. There were some changes to the schedule. Well, I must be making tracks now. It is time for the inspection. Sorry? What inspection? They're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. They're going to examine it again? Now? Naturally, I'm under no obligation to take part in any more of this matter now, but as upstanding member of London society, I'd be doing my best to help where I can. It is a gentleman's duty, so it is. So then, fare thee well. It was an absolute pleasure meeting you. Funny how he's in the expectant. Hope you have a way to time while you're studying here in Great Britain. And there he goes, a free man. Ah, oh, I forgot she was here too. Don't move. Whereas I want to say, get a move on. She really does like taking forever to load that thing. Miss Lestrade, would you mind putting that thing down? You're a grown-up. Sorry. <laughs> and I hate all grown-ups. <laughs> ah, there you are. <laughs> Naughty, naughty, running off like that. Is this so kind of picnic? Who is this little girl now? And taking with that with you as well? I was looking forward to the trial of one of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Ugh. Oh, do you want to play? You won't beat me. Grr. Um, excuse me, but who are you? Oh, uh, good day to you. I am, well, the inventor, I suppose, of the machine. The inventor. Well, normally smoke grenades are so dull, don't you agree? White, white, and more white. If you have to be shrouded in smoke, it could at least be a pretty color, I thought to myself. Do we have to be shrouded in smoke, though? At all? <laughs> I just took my eyes off it for a moment when I was changing it to a different omnibus, and she pinched it. Luckily, I fitted it with a telegraphic beacon. A what? I have no idea what this girl is talking about. Anyway, you're coming with me now, back to my laboratory. What? What for? To apologize, of course, Hilly, to my technician. What? You mean, say sorry? You must say sorry when you've done something wrong. Surely an adult has told you that before. An adult? Hmm. I don't listen to no adults. Come along, then. Follow me. Fine. Have it your way. Oh, good. You see, I knew you'd want to do the right thing in the end. I'm fairly sure that what she wants to do is not get shot by that massive gun of yours. Well, be leaving now, then. Bye-bye. I'm so sorry for all the fuss. She was a lively one. Whoever the hell that is. <laughs> well, do you think perhaps we ought to be on our way now, too? Yes, you're right, but... Where to? Oh, uh, we haven't had time to find a place to stay. No sooner have we arrived in London, we have to rush here. All our traveling cases are still in the bailiff. I was really planning to spend today in search of lodgings, but it's late hour in the day, I'm afraid we may be out of luck. Don't worry though, I have a plan. If the worst comes to worst, I've heard of a lovely park where we could spend the night. Please tell me you're not thinking of McGilded Park. I know it may be a little chilly at this time of year, but our youthfulness will see us through. I'm not so sure about that. I think midwinter London will freeze a young person solid just as easy as an elderly one. Oh dear, that doesn't sound agreeable. Now I'm starting to regret turning Mr. McGildren down. That 1,000 guineas would have paid for a lovely warm room or a mansion. 
And so, the trial determined my worthiness for the study tour was over in the end of their first day in London. However, as we were soon to learn, there were more trying times ahead, just as the Reaper of the Bailey had warned. The case was far from over. That button is the glaring point of that case. What's going on? Get the fire brigade! Water! Bring water! Quick! What? How did this happen? I don't know, sir. By the time I got here, it was already engulfed. No one was supposed to be allowed in here before we started investigating. <gasps> Who the hell's in there? Oh, this, this can't be. Who's in the carriage? Find out next week. <laughs> Probably Saturday after 9 JST. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave it there, man. That's a that's a clear